Uh, I now recognize uh, Ms. Snyder for uh, five minutes of uh, your testimony. Good morning, Chairman Raskin, Ranking Member Mace, and members of the subcommittee. Thank you for the invitation to speak at this hearing. My name is Jillian Snyder, and I am the Policy Director of Criminal Justice and Civil Liberties at the R Street Institute, which is a nonprofit, nonpartisan public policy research organization. In addition to my current role, I'm also a lecturer at John Jay College of Criminal Justice and a retired New York City police officer. I'm here to speak to you today about the critical nature of and growing bipartisan support for cannabis reform at the federal level. For more than five decades, the United States has prioritized the prohibition of cannabis, but these efforts have been futile. As it stands, cannabis is the most widely used illegal substance in the United States. It is estimated that 55 million Americans currently use marijuana, and recent polls indicate that more than 90% of the American public, Democrats and Republicans alike, support legalization for adult use of medicinal or recreational cannabis. Proposed federal le legislation indicates increased support for alternatives to federal cannabis prohibition, which is critical to provide clarity on the overall legal status of cannabis. Currently, cannabis may be legal in one state and decriminalized in another, but because it is still prohibited at the federal level, users or possessors of the substance are subjected to criminal penalty. This dual legality is problematic. It not only confuses the average citizen, but it also results in extremely varied approaches of policing. Federal prohibition and related enforcement efforts have intensified racial disparities, clogged court dockets, contributed to mass incarceration, devastated communities and families, proliferated an illegal drug market, diverted police resources from substantial threats in the community, increased the number of negative police citizen encounters, produced an associated distrust of the police, and continues to weaken the police community relationships that are integral to reducing more serious and violent crime. Of course, the legalization of cannabis alone cannot solve all these issues, but the potential benefits of smart federal legalization policy would outweigh the established consequences of prohibition. The widespread use of marijuana in the United States and its distinct lingering odor makes the substance especially prone to initiating police contact. During my policing career, I worked with the street level narcotics enforcement unit and served on the anti-crime unit, which proactively looks to deter violent crime and illegal weapons possession. The smell of marijuana was often the predicate for the team and I initiating a citizen stop. And while on rare occasions, we uncovered additional crimes, many of them low level in nature, such as driving on a suspended license or having a warrant for an unpaid summons, the fact remains that most of these encounters did not result in the seizure of more serious drugs or dangerous weapons. Continued cannabis prohibition has contributed to the evisceration of community confidence in police and the criminal justice system. A 2020 poll found that for the first time in 27 years, the majority of Americans do not trust the police. When citizens lack faith that the police can keep them safe, Violence escalates, street-level justice becomes preferred over police intervention, and public safety is sacrificed. Compounding the issue of low levels of community trust is the diminishing view of police legitimacy, which refers to the public support for their officers' authority to manage and resolve conflicts. The core principle of this mutual relationship is that the police have trust and confidence that the officers are honest and working diligently to keep them safe. If the police have the support of the public, citizens are more willing to defer to the authority of the police and believe that their actions are morally justified and appropriate to the circumstance. When police and the communities they serve collaborate, citizens are more willing to cooperate in efforts to prevent and respond to crime. This dynamic has the capacity to reduce neighborhood levels of crime and decrease opportunities for potential harm to police. Considering recent tr crime trends, focusing on anything other than violent crime is a distraction of law enforcement priorities. The United States must prioritize violent crime reduction in lieu of the emphasis on low-level cannabis enforcement to improve public safety. Smart, thoughtful cannabis legalization that is attuned to the demands of the market and the needs of the people has the capacity to revolutionize our communities and their interactions with law enforcement. The federal government has the opportunity to end the war on cannabis. Ending cannabis prohibition can disrupt illegal drug markets, reduce violence, enhance public safety, lessen negative police citizen interactions while restoring police legitimacy, and allow for reallocation of resources to quell the recent surge in homicides and other serious crime. 
Regardless of personal or moral perspectives, the federal prohibition of cannabis is bad public policy. Thank you for holding this hearing, and I look forward to your questions. Ms. Snyder, thank you very much for your testimony.